Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, uh, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, this episode's brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. And I particularly want to thank uh, Mirth and Mark so much for their support. Uh, uh, during the listener support campaign, you can still support the show at support.greatdetectives.net or patreon.greatdetectives.net to give on a recurring basis. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of The Saint, the original air date, July the 8th of 1951, and the title, Satan's Angels. The Adventures of the Saint, starring Tom Conway. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Tom Conway as... The Saint. Here you are, Mr. Templer. Thanks, Julius. Headache any better? No, it still feels as if they're building the new Third Avenue subway right through my head. Oh, that's too bad. I don't mind the digging so much, but I wish they'd be a little more gentle when they throw the track down. They're rather quiet in here tonight, anyway. Yeah, well, it's raining. You know, the people, they stay home when it rains. Mm, it was quiet last night, too. Well, then it was nice out. The people, they don't like to go indoors when it's nice out. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. What this business needs is nice, intermediate weather. But who's going to go in proposition nature? I'm glad to see you take the ups and downs of the saloon business philosophically. Mr. Templer, a guy, he's got no philosophy in him. He's got no business in a saloon business. Besides... I don't mind a couple of quiet nights. Gives me a chance to catch up on the newspapers. Now, what's the headline there? Oh, it's the same thing. Russia? Yeah, Russia, Russia. That other calamity, you know, the local one. Oh, which? Frenchy LaSalle. Oh, that's a former calamity, isn't it, Julius? They're burying LaSalle tomorrow. Well, that's what the cops say. But uh, you don't believe it, huh? Ignorance believes nothing, Mr. Templer, and me, I am ignorant. Oh, then I'll have to change your rating on my little list, Julius. I've mistakenly marked you down as wise. Nah, in many ways ignorant, Mr. Templer. Like, uh, for instance, how do they know? Uh, how do you mean, how? Well, for six months, the cops have been hunting high and low for this LaSalle. They got a reservation for him at Sing Sing, you know, private room. And a chair that's equipped with a built-in toaster. Uh-huh, yeah, they're going to fry him, and believe me, nobody deserved it better. And they finally find this Frenchy LaSalle. You see, he's dead in a river. Three weeks in a river, Mr. Templer. So how do they know? Uh, you mean uh, a man doesn't look like he used to look after three unhealthy weeks in the Hudson? Ah, uh-huh, that's my point. It ain't that I think the cops may be doing it on purpose, but you know they make sometimes mistakes. Mm, not very often. But sometimes. And it says in the paper he didn't even have no fingerprints left, you know, three weeks in a river. No, but you forget. He was wearing a ring that LaSalle always wore. The scraps of clothing were definitely established as LaSalle's, and the shoes and... Uh, Oh, there were a few other things. Yeah, but... Julius, a scientist can reconstruct the face and body of a man dead almost a million years just from a couple of bleached bones. Who knows? Huh? Well, they say that this is what the fellow looked like a million years ago, but you and me, we gonna tell him no? Or a fellow, maybe? Oh, you're a cynic. No, Mr. Tepl, I'm just ignorant. But what's the difference? They say that it's Frenchy LaSalle putting on the Tamara... So, all right, it's Frenchy LaSalle by me, too. <laughs> Good night, Julius. Good night, Mr. Templer. Hey, that headache of yours, you should put it to bed on a rainy night like this. That's exactly what I'm going to do with my headache, and with the rest of me, too. Oh, no, no. All right, all 
All right. At least let the doorbell go back to sleep, can't you? Now, what's all this? You, Simon Templer. Yes, but I... Simon Templer, who is known as the saint? Uh, look here, what is the... We'd uh... like to come in. Come on in, Mabel. I'm right with you, Midge. Oh, this is a nice joint. Business must be good. Uh, see here, would you two please explain... So you're the saint. Look... The saint. Look, I never give autographs, and if I did, it wouldn't be at two in the morning. Oh, we couldn't make it any earlier. The saint. You know, Midge, he's cute. Uh, look... Who are you two? We're angels. Huh? Angels. Julius was right. I should never have had scotch on top of champagne. So, uh, you're angels? Uh-huh. That's why we couldn't get here any sooner. You mean you had a rough crossing? No, not especially. There's never much traffic at this hour. Uh, there isn't, huh? And we didn't have to wait very long for the bus either, did we, Midge? Five minutes. The bus? You mean uh, there's a bus between uh, here and there? Uh-huh. Number 14. You change at Union Square. Of course, the subway's quicker. But Harry doesn't like for us angels to ride the subway so late at night. Harry? Satan, our boss. We call him Harry. <laughs> oh. Mr. Templer, you all right? You tell me. I mean, uh, what are you pinching yourself like that for? Can't you see that I'm trying to wake myself up? Oh, you seem awake enough to me, doesn't he, Mabel? Yeah, but... Well, Mr. Templer, what are you looking so unhappy? Don't... Angels ever have nightmares? Sure, why, sometimes I... Oh, Midge, do you know what I think? What, Mabel? I think he thinks we think we're real angels. Oh, Mabel. <laughs> oh, wait till we tell the girls. <laughs> Mr. Templer, honestly, for your own private information, we're positively not real angels. I mean, not the kind that you find in heaven, for instance. No. No, we're Satan's angels. Oh, no. Oh, you've heard of us, of course. Uh, not since the last time I read Dante's Inferno. Don't you like music? Of course I like music, but what on Mr. earth... Mr. Templer, Satan's angels? Or, putting it another way, Harry Satan and his all-girl orchestra? Oh, for the love of... You're an orchestra. Uh-huh. Tenor sax. Bass tuba. It's a good thing neither of you said the harp. We'd be in for another round of confusion... Look, girls, I'm not feeling very well at the moment, so I wonder if you wouldn't mind continuing this. But, some... Mr. Templer, we have a problem. Take her to Phil's Battalion. And after we came all the way across town following our last performance at the Paradise... Just Paradise? Take a... Look, let's not start that stuff again. We need your help. We really do. But I don't know anything about your music. I mean... Oh, we didn't come to see you about our music. No, it's something worse, much worse. What could it be worse? Our second trombone has disappeared. Completely vanished. Oh, it, it'll turn up in some pawn shop, I'm sure. And if it doesn't, why not uh, all chip in and buy another one? And let me go back to bed, huh? But it isn't an it. It's a she. Our second trombone, Mary Miller, and she's disappeared. I see. Tell me, have you ever heard of a thriving little institution known as the Missing Persons Bureau? Yeah, we called them. They won't handle it. They said they don't consider Mary missing just because she's been gone one and a half days. Good for them. I'm glad to see they're alert down there. But it isn't like Mary. Not at all. It may be only one and a half days to ordinary people, but to us, it's 14 performances she's been missing. And Mary never missed a performance in all the six months she's been with the band. I see. You must help us. You must. We're frantic. Yes, I was afraid you were. Please, please help us. Uh, look, ladies, just because a girl trombone player has been missing for 36 hours... 37 now. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. Ned, you hear? He's gonna do something. What? Well, if you will get out of here and let me get back to bed and remove myself of this headache, I promise you that first thing tomorrow, I'll visit you at the theater and look into this trombone business. Oh, Ned, isn't he wonderful? It's the Paradise, the one on the east side. The Paradise? Yes. Our first show is at 2 p.m. I'll be there. Now, good night. Please, good night. And uh, give my love to the rest of the angels. <laughs> Those two again. All right, all right, all right. Angel. For heaven's sake, girls. I don't look like girls, do I? 
As a matter of fact, you don't look like anything I've ever seen before. I'm coming in, Saint. Come on, why be different? What's the gun for, Ugly? You. Hey, it's a nice joint you got here. That's what they all say. Cigarette? Yeah, thanks. It's uh, poisoned, you know. I've been poisoned before. Yeah. Now, we talk now, huh? You're holding the gun. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you noticed things. I'm here about them tomatoes, Saint. Trombones, tomatoes. Tonight I'm doing a bigger business than Macy's. Them dames, I mean them angels. Keep clear, Saint. Tell them. Don't go looking for no missing dames, Saint. You won't be finding no trouble, you get it? Oh, the general drift. You know, uh, I'm beginning to think I know you from somewhere. Yeah, then it's time to stop thinking. Uh, the face is familiar, but I can't seem to place the nose. No, I've got it. Oh, lose it. That nose was flat the last time I saw it. About a year ago. So you've bought yourself a new schnozzle, Jake. The name's George. Uh, the name's Jake. Jake Florio. You work for French LaSalle. I drop it. Head of his artillery corps. You're clever, Saint, but right now is when you're going to start feeling sorry you wasn't born dumb. Now stand where you are. Now get out of here. Well, that's one way to get rid of a headache. Mr. Satan? That's right. My name's Templer. Hey, did you catch the show? As a matter of fact, Mr. Satan, I... We murdered the people today, murdered them. Almost as big as that day in Dubuque. <laughs> hey, you hear that applause, bud? Uh-huh, I heard it. Yeah, well, we'll improve. That's a great little outfit I got here. Great bunch of girls. You should have caught us that day in Dubuque. You just should have caught uh, us. Maybe next time. There's uh, something I wanted to talk to you about. Uh-uh. Uh, look, pal, if it's about them payments for those arrangements... I'm not you... collecting bills. I'm... I'm looking for a girl. Ah, so it's like that, eh? Uh, no, it's like this. I understand your second trombone player is missing. Eh? Second trump? Eh, hey, you're nuts. Uh, this is news to you. Married never miss a performance. Most conscientious girl in a band. Loves music. The only one in the whole outfit who does. Was she behind her trombone just now? You mean in a show we just now give? That's right. You're the leader, don't you know? Well, uh, sometimes, you know, I can't... Hi. Eh? Yeah, come in. Hurry, I want Oh, Mr. Templer. Hello there. You did come. A promise is Hey, a... wait a minute. Look, how come I don't know about this guy, huh? It hasn't as yet been reported in the racing form. That's how come. Oh, Mr. Templer, what can we do? Where can we begin? Well, uh, you and Mr. Satan can start the ball game by telling me a few things about the lady. Everything I know. First... Did she seem worried about anything these last few days? Mm, nervous, perhaps uh, frightened? It's hard to tell. Huh? Well, Mary's such a quiet girl. I became her roommate when she joined the Angels about six months ago. And even living with her, I never really felt I knew her. I see. Not that I didn't try to know her. I myself am a rather friendly person. Yeah, I'll say you uh, are with anybody. Harry, shut up. Of course, Mary was always nice and sweet to everyone and such a perfect little lady and all. But yet... What? Well, every now and then something sort of, well, sort of tough-like seemed to show up in her. Go on, you're nuts. Harry, I want you should butt out. Well, you're wrong. And she seemed like she was carrying secrets, Mr. Templer. Deep, sorrowful ones. Of course, I never asked her to elucidate. Not much. Where was she from? Well, that was one of the secrets. Every time I asked her, she'd make like she didn't hear me. But, Harry, you should know. Me? Nah, I don't know anything. Not anything, period. What did she do before she became one of Satan's? I don't know that either. Didn't she tell you anything of what she'd been doing before? What, what uh, orchestra she'd been playing with, for example? No, I never asked. And if I did ask, I don't remember. And if I asked her, she told me I don't remember that either. If she was a horse, you'd remember. Oh. If she was a horse, you'd even know how many hands high her grandmother was. You'd remember everything. Yeah, 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 remember everything. You see how it is, Pally? Most guys go through life getting nagged by just one of them. But not Harry Satan. Not that I got a hookup with 22. A 
Oh, go call your bookie. Yeah, you, you know something? I think I will. Ah, be seeing you, Pally. Remember their name. Mary Staten. So long. He's such a lovable jerk. I'd be a little more inclined to go along with you on that if he were a little less inclined to hiding things. You think he's holding out something about Mary? I'm sure of it. Uh, tell me, did you go through her belongings? Oh, why, I wouldn't dream of such a thing. Besides, she doesn't have very much to go through. Hmm. I'll take a look myself later. Did you take anything with her? Not so much as a toothbrush. Not even a powder. Oh, that was shot! Yes, Mabel. Come on. Harry! Yeah. Oh, Who shot you, Harry? I, I, I don't know. I didn't see. Came, came through the window up there. See? Oh. oh, Harry. Get a doctor, quick. Oh, no, no doctor. Look, pal, about Mary. Yes? If you don't, if you don't find her, go kill her. Who? Why? Look, I know they'll kill her, and I don't know why. But she's a good kid. Only one mistake. Only one mistake, she... Oh. oh. Harry. Oh, Harry. Oh, Mr. Templer. He's dead. Our room is down the middle of the hall, Mr. Templer, this way. I see. Thank you. It's a real cheesy hotel. But even sharing a room, Mary and I could just barely afford to... Oh, here we are. Well, at least the door works. It... What? <gasps> Mr. Templer, just look! You haven't been entertaining any tornadoes lately, have you? Well, I never. Who could have done such a thing? Who could have torn our room apart like this? Whoever well, it is was looking for something, obviously. Look! That is point number one. Point number two is, did he find it? Hello, what's this? Oh, that's Mary's first aid kit. You know, bandages and iodine and heaven knows what else. It's rather professional looking, wouldn't you say? Uh-huh. Mary never went traveling anywhere without it. Why, any time any of us girls cut a fingernail too close or got a little burn from a curly eye, there was Mary making like Florence Nightingale. I see. Harry used to... Poor Harry... He used to say having Mary with the orchestra was like having a doctor in the... You weren't listening. Is uh, this Mary? Uh-huh. That's me on the left. Midge took it last month. Oh, look at this room. What on earth could anyone have been looking for in here? I wish I knew, Mabel. But I do know this. Whatever it was, he didn't find it. You can tell? But how? The wallpaper. See how I ripped it off in places? Places that make no sense because there's no possible hiding place behind where the paper was. But so what? It was an act of frustration. Not finding what he was after in any of the probable places he looked, he lost his head and started on the improbable ones. And began to tear down the walls? Oh, I'd like to get my hands on him just for one little minute. So would I. But not because of the wallpaper, for what he did to Harry. Come on, let's get out of here. Yes. This room is just altogether too depressing. Wait a minute, Mabel. Is this Mary's trombone? Uh-huh. Well, they come in two pieces, don't they? The sliding part can be slid right off the blowing part and... What is it? Did you find something, Mr. Temple? I'll let you know as soon as I work whatever it is out of... There we are. They've rolled... They're rolled up. Mm. Well, I'll be... <gasps> X-ray pictures. Now, why? would Mary have x-ray pictures rolled up in her trombone? Because she figured, and rightly it seems, that her trombone would be the one place whoever was looking for them wouldn't look. But, but, I don't understand. Why should anyone... I'm just as puzzled as you are. Mr. Templer, you could never be. <laughs> Well, of course, I don't know all the registered nurses in town, Mr. Templer, but I do have a large agency and a rather good memory. And uh, the name Mary Miller rings no bells, Mrs. Sawyer, huh? I'm sorry. I'd like to help you. Perhaps one of the other nurses' agencies. Perhaps. Or perhaps Mary Miller was known as something else. Or perhaps she wasn't a nurse at all. Oh, you're not sure then that she was... Mm -mm. No, I looked into a box and found a hunch. A box? Yes, a first aid kit. 
One that seemed just a trifle too elaborate for a simple citizen to own. Oh, I see. You're sure that this snapshot doesn't... Uh... Mm, no. Doesn't look like any of the nurses at this age. Hmm. I wonder... Would you mind uh, wondering out loud, please? Of course, her hair was dark. Whose? If I could just see this girl as a brunette... Oh, that's easy. Why go to Antoine's when you have Templar? The picture, please, and uh, that soft pencil. Voila, mademoiselle is brunette now. Why, it is. It's Mary Webster. You say that name with an exclamation point after it. Several exclamation points. Go on. She was Dr. Burton's nurse. And so? You don't recall Dr. Burton? He was quite notorious. Uh, what did he do? Flunk his cigarette test? He had some rather interesting patients, Mr. Templer. The underworld, hoodlums, and gangsters. Uh-huh. And? Uh... And a remarkable, if rather specialized, specialty. Uh, bullets? That's right. Gunshot wounds. Wounds caused by hand grenades, knifings. And he just never bothered to report any of his patients' battle wounds to the police, as um, required by law, huh? That's right. He died in prison shortly after his conviction. And Mary, uh, Miller, or Webster, as the case may be? Also sent to prison, but with a light sentence. And, of course, her license was revoked. She had to give up nursing when she got out. And so she became a trombone player and a collector. Oh? What does she collect, Mr. Templer? X-ray pictures, old and rare ones. It sounds like a dull hobby, I admit, but I, I think there's money in it. Well, Raymond? Very interesting X-ray plate, Simon. But what am I supposed to do about them? Just uh, tell me about them, Doctor. Simon, I'm a physician employed by the Office of the City Medical Examiner. You know I'm not allowed to give private consultations here. I think this consultation might develop into a rather public one. It's a riddle you're making? I'm trying to make answers, my friend, not riddles. Yeah, very well. They're pictures of a shin bone, that's all. That's all? Well, a slightly different sort of a shin bone. Now, you see, see right here, this darker portion through here? Mm-hmm. It's a silver plate. Man evidently was in an accident of some sort. Or he was shot? Mm, yes, yes. A bullet would just about break off that amount of bone. Mm -hmm. He might have been shot. Anyhow, his physician had placed the missing bone with a silver plate. That's all. It's done all the time. Have you uh, done any autopsies around here lately on a body with a silver shin bone, Doctor? No. What are you trying to find out, Simon? What about Frenchy LaSalle? LaSalle? I did that autopsy myself. No silk plates. Then it wasn't LaSalle they buried this morning. What? Simon, you crazy. That body they dragged out of the river checked up as LaSalle on at least a dozen points. Planted points. The body was dressed up to give that impression before it was dumped into the river. Huh? Oh, it's simple enough. French's body comes out of the river and into a grave. And the, the police close the files on Frenchy. The heat is off and... That's how beats the chair. Yeah, but how do you know? What? That these X-ray pictures show LaSalle shin bone. Uh, a killer named Jake Florio, who used to be French's right arm, told me not to go looking for a missing girl named Mary Miller. Mm, either you have too much imagination or I don't have enough. Mary worked for the doctor who did the operation on this leg. She's probably one of the few living persons who knows that LaSalle has a silver plate to his shin. And... She had the x-rays to prove it. So? So, if the man buried today in French and LaSalle's bad name didn't have a silver plate in his leg... Then this Miller girl had some pretty important information. Why didn't she come to us with it? Because she wanted more than to be paid off with a... Uh, with a thank you. She isn't that good a citizen. You think she tried to shake down LaSalle? Mm-hmm. And I think LaSalle refused to shake. He's... Probably at this very moment, twisting her arm, trying to make her tell where these pictures are. I can see where he'd consider them important. They're the only thing in this world that can prove he's still alive and still a candidate for the electric chair. Yes? It's me, Mabel. And me, Mid. Hello, girls. It's always nice to welcome a couple of angels. Mr. 
Mr. Chancellor, we would like to know what, if anything, you are doing. We insist on knowing. As a matter of fact, I was reading a book. Reading a book? Mr. Kempler. It's called In One Head and Out the Other. Very amusing. Full of laughs. You can laugh at a time like this? With poor Mary still among the missing. And poor Harry among the murdered? Well, shouldn't you be out looking? That's exactly what I would be doing if uh, I weren't at home waiting. Waiting? For what? I expect that at any moment the doorbell will ring and a man named Jake Florio will be among us. For what, may I ask? Uh, just to kill me. Mr. Templer, at a time like this, you... Kill you? Mr. Templer, no. Don't let him. Um, I'll, I'll do my best. But, but why should anybody want to kill you? For the same reason he killed Harry Satan. I know too much about Mary Miller. And knowing too much about Mary, he's afraid to, might lead me to knowing just enough about Frenchie LaSalle. I don't understand you. Uh, it's healthier that way. Mr. Templer, are you sure that this Florio person is coming? Uh, not positive, but it figures that he should. But you, shouldn't you do something to protect yourself? I have. <gasps> oh! Oh! Get in the other room, quick. But, but... Do as I say. All right. Come on, Mabel. I'm coming. Yes? Hello, Graham. Oh, hello, Saint. Why, it isn't a telegram at all. It's Jake Florio. And I'll bet you've come to shoot me. I'm inside, Saint. Come on, come on. Uh, anything to oblige a man with a thirty-eight. I, I warned you not to poke around, Saint. You know what happens to smart guys who can't take a suggestion? <coughs> well, Simon, did it do it as you told me to? The operation is a complete success, Doctor. And now let's bring him back to life for a while so he can tell us where French LaSalle's hiding. Mr. Templer! Are you all right? I'm all right, I'm all right. Uh, oh. Doctor, I'd like you to meet a couple of angels. Uh, how do you do? Hello. Gee, Ned, he's cute. Yeah. Why, well, yes, he is. I've, uh, I've never noticed before. Simon. There. Delivery. You got the wrong apartment. I'm not expecting anything. I guess Mr. Florian must have given us the wrong address. Where are you from? The Mead Laboratories. I've got some x ray pictures here. X ray pictures? And Florio told you to bring them here? Yeah, but I, I guess I got the wrong address, so I'll just uh, be. Wait a minute, wait. Maybe I ought to take a look at them. All right. Now, and in that envelope. You! Say! Hello, Fresh. I'm coming in. No, you're not. Have a nice nap, us, huh? And stop worrying about those old X-ray pictures. You'll you'll probably be needing some brand new ones when you wake up. Ah, so this is your room, Miss Miller. Oh, don't worry, I'll untie you. But before I remove the gag from your mouth and give you a chance to talk back. I want you to listen to a little lecture I've prepared concerning the folly of trying to blackmail gangsters. Oh. Now, to begin with, when a ruthless killer oh. like French LaSalle... Oh. You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Tom Conway. Ladies and gentlemen, in our cast, you heard Sandra Gould as Mabel and Margaret Brayton as Mrs. Sawyer. Sheldon Leonard played Julius and Paul Richards, Jake. Dr. Raymond was Stanley Farrar and Harry, Benny Rubin. This is Tom Conway inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night. script of The Saint was written by Michael Crammell. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charters, is a James L. Safia production and is directed by Helen Mack. Tom Conway is soon to be seen in Warner Brothers' production of Painting the Clouds with Sunshine. 
All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer is Don Stanley. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. This is Andrew Rines with otrwesterns.com, where we stream live old-time radio westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, with a special twist. You select the tracks that get to be played. We've got a thousand different episodes from shows like Gunsmoke, Tales of the Texas Rangers, Escape, Gene Autry, and many more. Come check us out at otrwesterns.com slash live. Again, that's otrwesterns.com slash live. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio with Adam Graham. And now, let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, this actually, of all the Tom Conway stories, uh, so far, this has been my favorite. Because this really felt like this was written to fit his unique style and his unique take on the character, which is different from Vincent Price's. But it still played very well here with a lot of great moments and great lines and a very good and involved mystery. I did think the lecture about why not to blackmail gangsters was something we could have uh, used to hear, or at least uh, characters in other uh, detective shows could use to could stand here. The doctor uh, inserted in the the case of knocking out the uh, uh, gunman was probably more of a case of uh, not introducing an extra character when you didn't have to. But other than that, a very solid and enjoyable uh, episode that really shows uh, the strengths of Tom Conway as an actor. Over on Facebook, uh, John wrote uh, regarding the first episode with uh, Simon Templar, or with uh, Tom Conway as Simon Templar, Someone got some Sherlock in my saint. Of course, uh, Tom Conway over radio is probably better known as the Sherlock Holmes that immediately followed uh, Basil Rathbone, still teamed up with Nigel Bruce. So far, I think he's probably a better uh, saint than he was uh, Sherlock Holmes. But that may just have been all the challenges of uh, following uh, Basil Rathbone and still having that rapport with uh, Nigel Bruce, which can be a bit of a challenge. Though that's not to say he wasn't a solid Holmes. He's a very strong actor. Uh, finally, we do have a comment uh, from Mirth, uh, who uh, uh, writes in, uh, Thanks very much, Adam. I continue to enjoy your show, and it's a staple of my life. Well, thanks so much for your continued support of the program. It's definitely appreciated. And that will do it for today. We will be back tomorrow with The Adventures of Allery Queen, a special one-hour episode. And then next week, our final episode of The Saint with uh, Tom Conway. In the meantime, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio...